So now that I've got my new toolbar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my image. The image that you create could be you know, just about anything, but you want to have all the characters that you want you want to create in the image. Okay. I like to start every line off with the same letter, capital letter A in this case, and that's just so that I can be sure that my baseline is going to be the same regardless. Sometimes you don't know, lowercase letters sometimes have different sorts of baselines as related to the capital letter. Okay. Then the next thing you do is you have to decide what size is this font going to be at. So let's say I'm going to make a small font, a medium font, a large font, whatever. Uh, if it's going to be a small font and I'm going to digitize it for five millimeter or six millimeter letters, I want to make sure that this letter is five or six millimeters so that I can be aware of what my column widths and things are going to be at five millimeters, not I don't want to punch it at two inches and then have somebody shrink it down to a quarter of an inch and expect that it's going to sell with any given quality. So this particular font, it looks like with these small areas, it needs to be like a medium font. So the letter height from here to here is probably going to be around one centimeter. What you can do, though, is you can say, I know that this has got to be at least one millimeter. So when you go to image and resize, okay, you can draw this line here. You say, well, it's at one millimeter. Okay, that's all I need to know. I don't need to resize it. If I did, I would draw that line. If it said it was a half a millimeter or six millimeters, I'd just tell it that I want it to be one millimeter and it'll resize the image proportionally. Now, what I need to do now is I need to set the image span. The image span is the lower left corner of the letter I'm going to digitize. So I'm going to place it here. You see? And now I'm going to view my grid. That way it'll show me the baseline. You see? All we need to do now is start to digitize. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so I can get a little better control. Obviously, the cleaner the image, the better, but it's really not that critical. From here to here, that's 13, so we're good. And then from here to here, 13. All right, now that's one leg, as you can see. What I need to do now, I'm going to dim this image so we can see a little bit better. There we go. I'm going to punch the crossbar. You have to click insert branch. Okay, What a branch is, is another segment. It allows you to create another segment. Always looking to build a little bit of overlap in here. Okay. Insert another branch from here to here. And it looks like we're going to need to put a leg in here. And then finish it off from here to here. Now, that should have been a corner. Long left click. Long left click. And that's that. We stitch it. Place the start point at the lower left corner or actually anywhere on the left side. And then the end point at the furthest right, corner, uh, right point. That sets the width of the letter. A lot of times we'll set the start point in the middle like this and that'll if you are familiar with the actual keyboard lettering you can say I wanted to start the start and end points be closest join furthest join or as digitized if you say as digitized the letters will all try to start in the middle if you're going to be trimming between letters this is actually a better way to connect because the system won't start here and start stitching. It'll actually start in the middle and walk down. And as everyone knows, when you trim, it's important to try to get the first few stitches underneath the top stitching. Even if somebody forgets to put underlay in, this will take care of that. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to create a font. I need to check the physical size of this letter. Change size, and it's 173 height. So we need to know that for when we do the letter. So we go to select. I've already made my 
export as character. If you didn't make the toolbar, you go to right click, export as character. Okay, but for this, I can just click that, see how much faster it made it. We're going to make a new font. We'll call this uh, Quigley, and we'll set the height to the measured height from earlier at 173. And this is a single color font, so it'll be one layer, and we want the default filling method to be column. We click Save and close that. Now we set this character as a capital letter A, and we add it. Now all we have to do is delete this letter A, set the image span to the lower left corner of the letter B. As you can see now, why we have the grid shown, it helps us align the span vertically. Now all we have to do is digitize the letter B in the same way we did the letter A. Insert branch. We're going to go through this relatively quickly. We're not going to pay too much attention to how the letters digitize. Create another branch. And finish the B. Now all we have to do is select the B, export it as the letter B. And then you'll just go through and do the remaining characters, exporting them to the font. As you can see now, we'll have a new font named Quigley. And that's all you really have to do to create a new embroidery font for your CompuCon.